Take a camera and a microphone on many streets in Africa and people shy away. Not in Bangui though. Residents are desperate to talk. We're just alive by God's grace. If God did not want it, we would all have passed away by now. When I offer to hide their faces for fear of reprisals, the response is the same. We want to talk about it so that people can hear us and know what is happening. Seleka rebels toppled the government back in March. Almost overnight, this nation of four million became a failed state. The health service has collapsed, schooling is on its knees, and the economy is at a standstill. I lost my job after my boss fled when the Seleka arrived. Now it is difficult to provide for my family. They said they would pay salaries regularly. My father has not been paid for two months. I can't afford to go to school. There has been widespread looting. That's only tapered off now because there's little left to steal. Robbery, kidnapping and murder are widespread. Sexual violence too. I sell cakes to help put food on my family's table. Sometimes, the Seleka rebels take my cakes without paying. When I ask for money, they tell me they will undress me and rape me. Every time they come to my neighborhood, I keep fleeing into the bush with my children. Now one of them has malaria. It's a six month during that those guys are here. There is nothing work in the country. Everything is bad. So school, security, everything is bad. Their feelings are best summed up by a homeless teenager. According to me, there's no hope for this country because the president and the Seleka are all bad people. I don't like them. Despite the insecurity in the city, it is relatively safe. In the countryside where atrocities have been committed on a large scale, the state has ceased to exist. The international community, CAR's neighbors, have been promising to help. But to the people here, those words mean very little. Survival is all that counts. Robert Nagelo, CCTV, Bangui, Central African Republic.